The Lens of Tusi Slides director Theo Scudra. And I want to, I'm, I'm curious of what he sees. You know what I mean? I'm curious of what Drake's, uh, it must be crazy, bro, what he gets into. So I kind of want to see this video. Um, before we get started, again, if you guys are artists or whatever, anything that you guys kind of do, you guys want promoted, put it down. You know, I have a link down below for you guys to like go. It, it's in the Discord. You guys can go to Discord, but I'll have like a separate link for you guys to go and just like literally send me your stuff. I'll check it out. And then, you know, the best thing of the night I'll put in the video for like a 30 second low clip. All right, that's right, let's go. That part where he was at the bar going like this, I'm cramped up into this corner and I, I like got a frame, went to the side and I was just kind of like one eye there and I was like, oh, that's eight feet, that's 10 feet, that's 12 feet, always oh, back to like now I'm DJ four. But you just you just do it. I get to shoot constantly. Like that's one of the blessings of this job is I'm in a constant state of production all the time. My name's Theo Scudra. I'm a director, a photographer, and a cinematographer. The funny thing is, is that he, maybe a year ago, we were having dinner in Vegas and he was just like, what do you think about falling back from photography a lot this year and just filming way more? Yeah, can I, can we shoot on film? And he's like, can you? And I was like, yeah. And then went home and started figuring out if that was possible. And we realized quickly that that camera was the only camera that was gonna allow us to do it. Finding out that was the only camera we could use, then you then find out how rare it is. You can't get those things anymore. So like, and we had to start shooting soon. and. Yeah, luckily, fate sort of let that thing land in my lap. From having known him and worked with him for so long, we're like in an interesting space. I have an access that I think enables me to shoot something that's, I guess, more authentic, which I think is a pretty like original working relationship between him and I. I don't know how many other artists really have something like that that's been developed over such a long period of time. I don't even think he notices the camera much anymore. It's pretty natural what we got up to. I think that I like what we've that. always gravitated towards is much more of like a kind of docu-style music video, like nonstop, which was just as simple a concept as we're gonna be in London next week. We got wireless and a good party after. Let's, let's go shoot a music video. This New York video, I think that a lot of it just had to do with leaning in heavily to that classic New York thing of the bridge in the background. We're not trying to claim creative genius over any of that. That's clearly been done by any artist with a 5D on a rooftop in New York. But I think that like seeing him in that atmosphere and seeing him doing that stuff, it'll always be something a little bit different. A lot of the time it's me just with a camera shooting as if it's a documentary. Really so we start cool. shooting and shooting and shooting. We can figure out what the flow of the video is gonna be, what we need more of, and when we feel like we've got what we need, then you know, it's usually a wrap. Is this him shooting his life? That's dope, I like that, I like that. That's how it should be, honestly. Stills is nothing new. I, I started doing that uh, when I was a kid. My dad was a photographer. His dad was a photographer as well. It was just something that was always in the household. So, you know, I had like Nikon dinner place mats and cameras and lenses lying around all over the place that were almost like toys I'd play with. I do remember early on, like coming back from trips or a vacation, having my dad look at it and kind of critique it almost like an editorial department would and saying, oh, that's great or that's great or that's shit, you know, like mm -hmm. try this, try that. It was the beginning of me thinking about photography as something more than just a hobby. And then that sort of developed into filmmaking and filmmaking took on a life of its own. All that led to film school and film school led to short films, which led to meeting actors in the city, which led to me meeting Drake. On Marvin's room, I took a photo of him that I wasn't really supposed to take. Mm -hmm. The director snapped at me and he said, no, 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 Drake said, no, it's all good, don't worry about it, just send me that photo, and I did, and he ended up using it for 
the single art for trust issues. And from then on, uh, his creative director just said, yeah, just keep coming out and keep taking photos. And then it was in a set of headlines. He was like, so do you want to come on tour? There's something that happens on tour, you know, it gets very repetitive. You're doing 70 shows over two months. And after a while, you, you know, you start taking the same photo and that kind of causes you to like start venturing out and trying to find something different. And that was something that was different. You know, the idea of this guy by himself sweeping up an entire stadium of confetti. That was one moment that just felt very in the wake of the rush of that show and that chaos. And you can imagine the before and after was this like crazy confetti drop of fireworks and, and light. And then there's this guy after sort of in the reality of that. Yeah. You Damn, sort of know where everybody's going to be in the process of a show. You know, you know where the warm-up's going to be. You know where the walkout's going to be. And 30, 40 shows in, you're starting to figure out ways of maybe capturing it a little bit differently. That shot of the dancers walking to the stage is a product of that, you know? Again, knowing that they're going to walk that line, seeing those arrows was something that I remember running ahead of the pack to go get and then just getting one chance at that one shot. I knew that he was going to go down into the staging area, and I guess it was just a moment that lasted all of one second that I was just lucky to capture. That's dope, man. Jake's life is insane. Man. I think that when you're thinking about an audience, the last thing you're thinking about is their feet. But there's, I guess, a moment in that frame when everybody's... It's not just up off the seat, it's like on the seat. And I think that that's something that I really love about it. And it's also just like the contrast of it in black and white, the numbering and labeling, and you can see the organization of how a crowd is laid out. And then there's just a good kind of cross section of people and genre within the shoes that they wear. It just feels like there's a lot going on to it, but it's all within one frame. Yeah, there's a photo cool. of Drake and Cole that I really like two guys who I think are like just like the greatest at what they do in the most authentic moment possible. Catching them in like just a very low key moment, very casual, friendly moment to me, I think is like a rare thing to see. I was really happy with that one. I've seen that picture. That picture's cool as hell. It's an interesting element of the job. When you're holding a camera, you're definitely not experiencing I feel like the more fun everyone else is having, the more I'm working. The vibe that we'll be a part of in London is way different than the one that we'll be a part of in LA. The reason we travel to these different places is always different, you know, it could be to catch a vibe in a different city because of the vibe that that city brings. Or if we're going to like, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, you know, there's always sort of motivation to being in a place like that, that I guess changes like the style of what I do and the work that I do, but Toronto is home, no matter what. I still feel like you might get the best of certain things in other cities, if it's like Paris for architecture or New York and LA for food, but I feel like when it all comes together, Toronto is just the greatest place on earth. I like that. Home is where the heart is, man. I love it. I really fucking like this video. It gives me the chills. It really, it really gives me the chills. It's, yeah, there's some more. more. Yeah, let's go to it. That's pretty much it. That was cool. That was cool, my boy. The way you plugged yourself at the end, you made yourself look cool as shit. You know what you did there. You know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna try that. Yeah. That's pretty much it.